Hey everyone, how's it going? Brian here with another Java game programming tutorial. So the last time we left off, we didn't make too much of a difference uh, as far as what our game actually looks like. We did a lot of behind the scenes work to get this menu up and running. And if we go to our game class here, where we're currently handling the in-game menus, you see we made a new method, uh, a new way to create buttons in our game via the Tower Picker UI menu. So these lines right here, if we run the game, uh, make all these buttons in the top left corner here. Pretty simple stuff uh, as far as adding a new button is now. Like I said last episode, I'd like to combine uh, these lines here with these lines here so that, uh, you know, we can just create one new button inside of one line of code that has the texture and the placement as well as the action that is performed when you press the button. Uh, so what we're going to do this time, I've been thinking about you know, various ways to do our menu, and I think I hinted a while ago at the idea that we might just make our menu kind of pop in and pop out when you hover over it. And I started thinking about that some more. Okay, I thought that was like my computer making noises. There's like a drill outside. Hopefully you guys can't hear that. I'll try to edit it out. Um, my neighbor's doing some crazy, crazy work in his garage. Anyways, uh, so yeah, what I was saying was I was planning on before having a pop-out menu, so you hover over the top of the screen, the left or the right, and the menu kind of slides out, and we're still going to add that functionality, but that's not uh, what I think we're going to do right off the bat. Um, I think it makes more sense, at least to me, to kind of have a simpler UI design, uh, menus that don't appear and disappear, but rather are just there the entire time. I actually played a couple other tower defense games, just like online flash games as well as uh, on Steam, um, and I kind of got some inspiration from their UI. And it seemed like one of the most common things they did was just have, you know, a menu off to the side, the left, the right, top or bottom. So what I think we're going to do this episode is we're going to just extend our game screen a little bit here. And uh, because we haven't really set up our resolution controls yet, and everyone's kind of working on different sized monitors, we're going to see how this works. So please let me know in the comments if at the end of this video you're having any kind of texture issues or screen size issues that don't look normal. And uh, we'll try to work through that or maybe even uh, do something else other than this. But anyways, so this episode we're going to extend our game screen over this way. It's a very, very robust way to add a menu by actually extending our game. Um, so like I said, we'll go back and kind of resize everything. This is just kind of like a, you know, obviously a work in progress, but the sizing and the spacing and the resolution is all going to be, uh, you know, mod... What am I trying to say? Modular in the future where we can just kind of slide it left and right and have everything resized appropriately. So don't get too uh, concerned about the fact that we're changing the size of our entire game. It's not actually as big of a deal as it may seem. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that right off the bat. So let's go ahead and go to our artist class here. And here we have our public static final int width and height. Uh, so our width is 1280 and our height is 960 if you're following what I'm doing so far. Uh, what I imagine I'm going to do... And by that, I mean what I am going to do, and what I imagine you will as well, is we're going to extend the screen to the right by about three tiles worth. Um, so what I'd like to have is maybe rows of two. Is that what I'm trying to say? Two columns, so yeah, rows of two uh, for all of our buttons that kind of just cascade down this way. So by extending it three towers, I think eventually we'll have a little space here, and then our two options and a little space here for like padding. So, uh, tile size times three. My tile size is 64, as it shows right here, times three. Uh, that's 180 plus 12, so 192. So 1280 plus 182. Ooh, lots of math. Uh, 1472? That seems about right, right? Plus 100, plus, let's go with that. So increase that to 1472. And let's see if our game completely breaks. It shouldn't, I don't think. Hey, there we go. We got a nice, good-looking black screen over here. So we will have to uh, move this menu and kind of resize it appropriately. Uh, or maybe not. Maybe we'll just keep it like this until we implement the functions to automatically do that for us. Hit play, and we have this black spot over here. Um, I have a texture that is just nothing more than a reddish-gray background that I created in Photoshop in like 10 seconds. Uh, feel free to make a more advanced one. In fact, maybe on Patreon I'll post a a more advanced menu texture or a better looking one uh, in the future. But for now, uh, it's called menu underscore background. 
Maybe you want to rename that to, you know, tower picker background or whatever you want. There's a link to download this in the video description on YouTube, as well as the comments on Patreon. So go ahead and download that now, name it menu underscore background or something that you're going to remember and reference in the game and put it inside of your resources folder, your res folder. And once you've done that, we're going to go to our game class, I guess, since this is where we're making the UI, we could eventually move this to our UI maybe, but for now we'll just put it in our game class uh, just to get it up and running. Uh, instead of our update method, we'll do a quick draw call, which I don't believe we have imported. We have quick load and tile size now. So go ahead and import static helpers dot, come on load, artist dot quick draw. And it's going to be some trouble because quick draw is not a method. We want draw quad text. You know, quick draw might not be a bad idea. But anyway, draw quad text. And instead of our update method, we are going to manually call this draw quad text. The texture is going to be quick load menu background. The X and Y will be 1280. That was our previous width of the screen. Uh, the Y will be zero. The height will be 960. I'm sorry, the width will do the width first. Um, so what, what did we say it was 192? And the height is the entire height of our screen, which is 960. I believe these numbers are correct. Let's go ahead and try this out. Uh, yeah, there we go. So now we got this nice, super pretty, a uh, gray rectangle on the side of our screen. And now you're thinking, you're thinking, wow, this looks a lot better than it did before this video. No, I know no one's thinking that, but we can spruce it up in the future. Right now we're just trying to get our buttons over here off the screen so we can actually play around with our entire map and not have our, our towers obscure our map. They look like they're placed, but they're not even placed. So let's go ahead and move our buttons now over here. We're gonna make use of our uh, new menu functionality of our UI class to kind of make a menu inside of this sidebar right here and have our buttons space out. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, first off, we're gonna change up, and minimize this, we're gonna change up our UI class even more than we already have here. Uh, I know it's still a mess, but I think we should add the functionality. We should add as much functionality as we can and then go back and kind of in one fell swoop, clean it up and uh, optimize it some more. So for our UI class, we're gonna make a new kind of menu. We're gonna add some options to our menu, I should say. Uh, this is an easy time to do this because we only have one menu in the game so far, which is our tower picker UI. So it's better to kind of change around the way menus work now than when we have like a bunch of menus. So we're still going to have a name, an X, and a Y. But I think that we should also have uh, an int. Um, I guess I'll call it options width. And just to future proof it, we'll add options height as well, even though we're not going to use that right now. We will also add integers or variables to store those uh, values in. So options width and options height. And then of course you guys know what to do here. Uh, right after x, y, right here. This dot options width equals, oops, options width. And this dot options height equals options height. Now, we're going to change the math a little bit. Uh, first off, we also need to correct this, our create menu of the UI. It now takes two more variables. So add the same thing here, options width and options height and options width, options height. Okay, let's go to our game class. And now when we make our menu, uh, we have the name, the X, the Y, and then we want the, what I should have explained this earlier, I guess, options width and options height, in case you want to rename it to something better because I'm terrible at making up variable names, is, so say we have a menu, right, in that little sidebar. The way I'm picturing it is we're going to have rows of two, so two items per row of tower buttons. So options width would be two. That's what I mean by that. I mean the amount of options wide that a menu is. Okay, so we have the name, the X, the Y, options width will be two, and then height will be zero, just because we're not gonna be using it and that's gonna be the default uh, 
null value. Uh, so let's go ahead and change this also, because the x is no longer in the top left, it's actually at 1280. And let's see how this looks. I think they should be going off the screen. Uh, they are. So we have all three here, and it trails off. There's more over here that you can't see. The buttons still work. You'll notice that the temporary code we have when placing the tower places at the top left of the screen if it doesn't have a tile under it. So if we click this, you see at the very top left of the screen, it's up there until you move over the screen, then it kind of goes there. Go back and it goes up to the top left. Uh, we can just make it so that it stops wherever you were last holding it. So if we go here and then move over, it'll stop on the square right here. Uh, that should be pretty easy. So to continue what we're doing, we're going to wrap around those buttons so that they don't just kind of go off the screen. Because right now we have like six buttons showing or six buttons that are in the game, but only three are showing because we have room for three and then they kind of go off the screen here. Uh, the way we're going to do that is go to our menu subclass right here instead of our UI class. And when we add a button, we're going to change the math around a little bit. So, so far, all we're doing is we're keeping track of the amount of buttons. And then we are moving every subsequent button to the right by the size of our tile. So we have just enough room for each button. And the next one moves to the right of the previous button. What we're going to do this time is we're going to add a way to kind of indent or move down the buttons based on the options width of our menu. So now I just need to quietly think to myself for a second, the easiest way to do that. Uh, how about this? If options width does not equal zero, right? That'd be the default. Uh, then we're going to do something. We're going to set the Y. Yep. Be that set Y to the Y of our menu plus 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 button amount this is inside parentheses button amount multiplied by the tile size divide no 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 how about this button amount multiplied button amount divided by two will that work button amount divided by two times the tile size. Parenthesis. All right. Now, when you record stuff and you're talking out loud and you're trying to like get it down for the record and you're also typing at the same time, it might not come out right. So if this math it just looks ridiculous to you and is way off. I'll fix it in a second. But let's see how this looks. Okay. It actually it worked. It worked out exactly how I wanted it to work out. I know it looks very dumb. But what we're gonna do now is we get the Y correct. So after every two, we move down the next buttons down one Y. Uh, all we need to do now is move the X to the left every time after every uh, two buttons. So that will be B.setX, we can do it in actually this one line. Uh, another way we can do it is count, uh, like for every two, like a for loop, but that just seems redundant. Uh, we can just do it instead of our B.setX using a cool little modulus thing. So b.setx is the x of our menu plus button amount. I think it'll just be mod two. So button amount, put a percentage sign here for modulus two. Okay, so button amount, try it. Yeah, right? Let's see. Sweet, awesome. All right, so I know we actually haven't used this function before uh, in this programming series. People that program in general or have done other programming will hopefully recognize it. Uh, but for those of you just following the series or it's your first game you're making, uh, I will link in the description to a kind of descriptor page about this. Basically what the function does is it divides by a number, in this case two, and it gives you back the remainder of that division. So gosh, I, I wish I had prepared a better way to explain this uh, on the spot here. So basically we're taking our button amount no matter what it is. So say it gets down to six, we have six buttons. We're dividing that by two because there's two in each row. In fact, this should be, this is why I talk out loud because it helps me remember things. This should be our options dot width. And b dot set y should also be, should it be? b dot set y. Because we're moving it down the button amount. Yeah, options dot width. All right, so in this case, options dot, or options width is two, and the button amount will say is six. We're on our six button. We take six, 
we divide it by two because there's two in uh, each row. And what we're left with as a remainder is zero because there's an equal, like six is divisible by two. So you end up with three and then nothing over that. So we're taking our X and we're setting it to zero, which would be the far left. Uh, yeah, I'll put a descriptor in the description, a uh, link to a page that describes it. And if you have questions about how it works, just ask in the comments and I'll hopefully someone else as well as me will be able to explain it further. In any case, it worked out great for us this episode. So let's add one more of these just so we can look nice and even here. Boop. And now we should have six buttons in our game. There we go. And they look all super nice. Let's actually move our menu over by 32, half of our tile size in our game here. So, oh gosh, more math. 13, 12, right? Does that seem right? 13, 12. There we go. Now it's centered. You can move it down if you want some more. Uh, what I will do next episode, what we will do, is create some math that will space them out appropriately so they're not like right next to each other with this padding on either side it's kind of a more uh equally spaced out but anyways i don't know if you could tell so far hopefully it wasn't too obvious but uh i completely lost my voice from yelling recently so i'm gonna end the episode here but you know hopefully you guys are happy that the game looks a little bit different this time more exciting than last episode i think and we got some good functions done i got the math done my first try which i'm you know go me i should be able to do that and uh, yeah, I think that's it for this week. Next week, we're going to, like I said, add some more math to our UI to, mac to automatically space the buttons out appropriately and make them look nicer so we're not like manually messing with these big numbers here that don't really make sense. And uh, do some more functionality that is yet to be determined. So thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you all next time on Indie Programmer. <laughs>